So I'm going to click record. There we go. Um, and then so today, the, the goal really is just going to, uh, to be to provide you with a general overview um, of Ultra. We're going to look at um, the features guide uh, that's available on our website. Um, Blackboard is constantly updating uh, and adding new features to Ultra. And so um, I'm just going to, I'm going to show you a link where you can look to see uh, what those uh, new features may be and what may be coming in, in the near future. We're going to start today by building a shell course. Um, a shell is essentially a sandbox. So it's a place that you can uh, practice all of these things. You can do a, a full course copy into the shell if you'd like. You can um, do some small granular copies. You can build things. And then if you like them, you can copy them into your regular course. And if you don't like it and the way that it turned out, it's really easy to delete um, and uh, much easier than, than in your actual course. Um, we're going to look at building in Ultra. So um, modules and folders, different types of assessments in the gradebook. And then we're going to talk about course migration. So I, I'm sure that's uh, the, the question that a lot of you will have is how to get things from Blackboard Original into Ultra. Uh, and we'll look at a couple of workflows related to that. And at the end, we'll have time for questions. Uh, but if there's something that's not clear, uh, or if you have questions that come up, you can throw them in the chat, or you can just unmute and ask them. Um, also, from time to time, I have issues with my microphone cutting out, and I just turned to static. If that's the case, uh, please jump in and let me know. <laughs> Don't let me go too long, uh, just sitting here talking to myself. So, um, so why Ultra, I guess, is probably a question that many people will have. Um, I think someone explained this to me at the at the um, Blackboard conference this summer, is that it, it's probably easier to think of Ultra as a new learning management system as opposed to an update to Blackboard original. Um, and there are a couple of, uh, I think, a couple of pieces that, that are valuable uh, in making the switch. Uh, one, and, and perhaps most importantly, is that uh, Blackboard is not guaranteeing how long it's going to support Blackboard original. Um, and so making this move now may save us uh, potential problems in the future if they decide uh, when they're that they're going to stop supporting the features uh, that are available in, in original uh, and currently as i said they're, they're releasing tons of new updates for ultra and and um, the original is kind of on the back burner they're not doing much with it um, the the second uh, reason for the shift i think is um, it has a, a bit more of a kind of a modern appeal and look to it um, blackboard original has a look that looks kind of early 2000 2010s um, and so Ultra is designed to look a bit more visually appealing, uh, but I think most importantly is that it's much more mobile friendly and a significant number of our students are, are operating on mobile devices and sometimes solely on mobile devices. And so the, the content that comes through um, in Ultra uh, is, is much easier to use and navigate on uh, mobile devices. And we're going to be releasing a little bit more information, um, kind of some tutorials and, and perhaps some workshops also on uh, kind of creating uh, mobile friendly courses or, or how to navigate Blackboard uh, more effectively on mobile devices. So the um, we have a website, CIDL has a website uh, specifically related to teaching and learning with Blackboard. Uh, and if you go into the, if you go to the website, uh, you can click on Ultra and find a ton of resources here uh, that can help you with your transition or with figuring out how to do different things um, or also just kind of learning um, uh, like what's upcoming, what changes may be uh, in store. Uh, you may be able to look and see if there's a feature that you want that you haven't been able to find. Um, it's a great place to look. Um, and then, yeah, the, so this is the feature guide. So you can see uh, they, they Blackboard releases this kind of key, key concepts, and then they put if it's been discontinued and maybe going away, or they may be working on it, um, or maybe it's currently available. And you can kind of compare back and forth between what you may have been doing in original with what's going on uh, in Ultra. And then, as I said, uh, Blackboard every month uh, has a new release. Um, it goes into a test server, which for January goes into the test server today. And then by the first week of January, I believe, um, the new features will be released. So the, the ones for December just came. Um, for example, there's a rubric feature that you can use. It was limited to 15 rows and 15 columns. And now it's essentially unlimited. Um, so they're constantly making updates like that. If you have issues or find issues, uh, they have um, a place called the Idea Exchange. Um, and you can go on and leave an idea for Blackboard uh, to consider. And your peers will either upvote it uh, or comment on it. 
uh, and Blackboard pulls a lot of their um, updates from that ID exchange. So um, yeah, that's it. So I think the, the best thing to do then is actually jump in and um, look at Blackboard itself, but uh, look at Ultra itself. Uh, so let me take away that screen and put in this one. Uh, so the first thing that, that you'll need to do is either request your courses um, or request a shell. This page probably looks familiar. Um, the If you go into tools and then into Blackboard faculty tools, this is where you can request shells or request your courses. Uh, for the sake of today, I'm going to work in a shell. Uh, and I, I, if this is your first time using Ultra, I'd recommend working in a shell as well. Um, as I said, if you make mistakes or if you don't like things, it's a lot easier to just kind of erase it or make a new one um, and then go from there. Especially if you're thinking about copying your entire course over in one big chunk, I highly recommend doing that in a shell. And that way, again, if you're not satisfied with the way that it looks or the way that things copied over, and we'll talk about some of the challenges that may come from that, um, in a shell, it's, it's really easy just to start a new one and delete the old one. So if you click my shells, then you can click this plus sign, uh, request new shells. It really doesn't matter what you, um, how you categorize it here. You can can do anything you want. I'm just going to call it uh, this. And you click submit, and it'll take I don't know a minute or so, typically less than that, uh, up to load. And then if you go back to your courses, um, I'm going to refresh the page. And you can see I have quite a few of these. Uh, this is the new one here. Nope, not the new one. There it is. When you have three shells named the same thing, <laughs> it gets confusing. Um, you can change the name um, just by clicking the pencil here if you want to change the name of the shell. Um, so we're going to just call it. Uh, making the move for December 12th. Um, <clears throat> so this is what the course looks like in Ultra. This is what you'll see when you first log in, um, The which, which looks quite a bit different, I think, than, than original course view. The, you're on the content page currently, and you'll know uh, on this toolbar here where you are because it'll be underlined in purple. So if I went to the gradebook, it'll give me the purple underline there and so on. Um, there's not a whole drop down list of how to add items. Uh, and so the first thing to look at, I think, for this is how do you actually add things to your course? Um, and this is where it can get a little tricky. Uh, you can click here on this plus sign that says add content, which is pretty easy. Um, or if you hover over uh, some spots, you're going to find some little plus signs that appear. So we're going to start with this one. Um, we're going to add content, and then we click the plus sign for create. And this is how we add new items um, to our Blackboard course. Um, this is this list here is significantly reduced from what you would have seen in original course view. Most of the options uh, are still here. Um, they're just labeled in a way, uh, like for example, you see only two assessment types, but once you make a test, you can go in and categorize it as a quiz or categorize it as an exam. Um, and so that's, it's just a little bit more simple on the, on the front end but then you can go into the settings and adjust it to whatever you, you can really name it, anything you want. Um, the main areas of organization in, um, in Ultra are learning modules and folders. And this is where some of you may run into some problems uh, and where a lot of people end up having a little bit of a headache. Uh, in Blackboard Original, you could have as many folders inside of folders as you wanted. You could nest them as deep as you'd like. In Ultra, you can only go two layers deep. So if you have a course in Original, that has a folder and then inside of that folder is a series of folders and then there's folders inside of those folders. If you could convert that course over, it's going to flatten your course to two levels. So it'll take your folders and it'll just bump them out here on this main page as opposed to uh, they won't stay within the, within the folders that they were in. So that if you, if you have a course that looks like that and you do a course copy, just know that that's something you'll have to go in and clean up. Um, so learning modules and folders, as I said, are kind of the two big buckets that hold content. Um, main differences between them, <coughs> a, a folder is pretty self-explanatory. It's just a, a folder that you put things in. Um, a module is, can serve more as a guide, and, and it can provide direction. 
Um, so what you can do is you can um, force sequence, for example. So you have to complete item one before you complete item two, before you complete item three, uh, and so on. Um, visually, it can be slightly more appealing because you can add images as well. Um, Ultra now has the use of stock images from Unsplash. So um, you can actually do some sort of history themed image. Um, now let's go with these books. So you can put, uh, you can pick an image if you'd like, you can upload your own images. Uh, it makes it slightly more visually appealing. Um, a lot of online courses will operate on a weekly module. So week one, week two, week three. Um, my courses, when I taught were more unit based. So unit one, unit two, unit three, and so on. Um, but again, you can kind of, you can set a sequence if you use a module. Um, you can put a folder within modules as well. You can put as many folders really in this module as you want but you can't put folders inside of those folders. Like that's the, the, uh, the kind of cutoff on, on depth of, of nesting. Uh, so let's just call this, oh, I'll show you what I did. Um, if you click up here and you click that pencil, you can edit the uh, name. So we're gonna call it unit one. Uh, and then we'll make it visible to students through this drop down here. And then if I get, like I said, if we wanted to force a sequence, we can um, but it's not required to do that. So now I have my folder here. Now here's what I was saying before about the plus signs that will appear. So anytime you want to add content, you have to find one of these plus signs. You can drag and drop content. So if you have a folder with a bunch of documents that you want to pull in, you can just drag and drop them in. Uh, you can pick exactly where they go. So I think in original, when you would add an item, it would just drop it down at the bottom and then you would have to kind of move it around to where you wanted. You can still move things around by uh, clicking on the little dots out here to the left. Uh, but you can also select where you want something to go. So you see these plus signs appear here. And then really anytime you see a line like this, if you hover over it, a plus sign will appear. You can click it and you can create from there. Also, if you click the little uh, drop down carrot here, um, I can add an item directly into um, this. Uh, so I'm going to create, I'll click a folder. And I'll call this readings one. Uh, make that visible if I choose. You can also set release conditions uh, for some of these as well. Um, so now I have a folder inside of my module. <clears throat> I can put items in the folder. I just can't put more folders in the folder. Hope that makes sense. Um, and then, so modules and folders are the main two storage buckets that are used in Ultra. You can also use Ultra documents. Um, so if I, if I click this plus sign here, I can add, create um, a document here. And then you can add content, uh, whatever you'd like to add here. So you can add images, you can add um, text. This could be like you paste your syllabus into here. You can add things from the cloud. You can create your readings in these. Uh, it's just another way to um, present content. A new feature that will be coming out in the next uh, few months will be the ability to add uh, kind of comprehension questions through these as well. That's not currently available, but, but I think that's coming up either in January or February. Um, so let's just call this doc one. And then uh, you click add content, and then you'll get this content editor. And so this is the standard um, text editor that uh, exists throughout the different features um, that, that allow text. So you'll see this in the tests, you'll see it in discussions and so on. So you can just type in here, um, you can click the plus sign over here and <clears throat> add different media if you'd like. You can connect to your storage. This is what it looks like when students turn in documents as well. So they can click uh, you know, to upload documents from the cloud storage. They can drag and drop things in. Um, and then they can attach, you can attach links, you can make attachments, and you can add images here as well. It has some features uh, that you would use like in Word or in Google Docs as well. Um, it, it's a little bit more clunky, I think, uh, in some ways. Um, but the fact that it's integrated makes it easy. And I know that, uh, again, there are going to be new updates coming to this as well, as far as like organizing columns and how you kind of place and locate um, things within these documents. The other nice thing is it works with Ally. And so you can get a report to how um, accessible your material is uh, in other formats. So students can then download it as a, as a uh, text, I'm sorry, as a um, audio document, or they may download it in different formats um using using blackboard ally and so you, once you put stuff in here you'll get a score on that depending on how 
friendly or non-friendly um, the, the content is for that. So modules and folders, the main organizational features, um, the plus sign is how you add every, anything that you'd like. Um, and then documents is just a way to, again, present um, information uh, content-wise. Um, the other main main things that people are concerned with, obviously, on their Blackboard is um, assessments. So the same thing, if you want to add an assessment, you can click the plus sign and then click Create. And then you have um, kind of these four tests, assignments, discussions, and journals. Um, tests, I would. In, in reality, they're very, almost exactly the same. Um, they just have a different, a different icon. But you can you can put it in as a test. So we'll just we'll do it, and then we'll we'll look and see uh, how it works. So we can just call it test one. Um, and then over here is where you'll have your settings over on the right hand side. Um, you can set your due date. You just click uh, to set the due date, and then once you open these settings, it it gives you the option to adjust other settings. Also, anytime you see the the kind of cog. You can open that to adjust the settings as well. So here you can set your due date and time, and then you have other options as well. You can prohibit late uh, submissions. You can prohibit new attempts after the due date. Uh, you can allow or or uh, not class conversations, uh, and then you can also choose to collect submissions offline. So you want you want to have a maybe you want to have directions on here, but you want students to actually hand in a physical paper. You can click collect submissions on offline. It will create a um, column in the gradebook for you, but students won't be able to upload things. They would actually have to hand in hand in the paper. Um, and then there are different tools depending on the type of assessment that it is. So if it's a test uh, and you have questions, you can prohibit backtracking. You can randomize the questions. You can randomize the answers. Yeah, you can do page breaks and then randomize the pages. Uh, you can click formative assessment. And then you can choose whether or not that's graded um, and, and counts toward the grade, uh, but it'll show up as, as a formative assessment to students. Um, and then here's where you change the categories. So it comes with these presets, but you can really add anything you want. So I worked at a school who um, we gave tests and we gave quizzes, but then they also wanted to give something that was in between and they called them quests. Um, and so I could have made a category that fit into this, or I could do a, uh, uh, an in-class simulation of my history classes. I could put simulations as a, as a uh, category. And I'll show you how to do that when we get into the grade book. But you can select that here. You can choose the number of attempts. You can choose how do you want to grade based on points, percentages, letters, and so on. Um, once you uh, have content coming in, you can choose to select uh, hide student names. So you can do anonymous grading. Um, and then you can also, if, say you have TAs and you want to, uh, or, or multiple instructors and you want to have uh, multiple eyes grade the same paper. You can you can set that as well. Uh, here's a setting that some people like uh, and some people hate is <laughs> posting grades automatically. So you have to you can turn that on or off. Um, if this is an automatically graded quiz um, and you put post assessment grades automatically, um, it, as soon as they submit it, it can post the grades. Or you can set that uh, to appear later if you'd like as well. Um, let's see other tools. You can set time limits, um, which will automatically submit student work when that time is up. Um, you can attach goals and standards. If you have a set of goals and standards already created, you can attach those to the, to the course. Safe assign, you can use safe assign as well, uh, or lockdown browser is here as well. And then uh, rubrics. So uh, as I said earlier, um, you can create a rubric. You just click create, and then they pop up. Um, and again, the feature, a main feature that came out this month is uh, you can really add as many rows and columns as you want. So if you if you just kind of hover over in between the lines, you'll see the little plus. You just click it, and it gives you a new, um, uh, in this case, a new column. Or, or the same if you're going down, and you click, you get new rows. And then you can go in and adjust the rubric to say whatever you'd like. If you already have a rubric and you want to paste things in, um, or you can build these out, and then you can save them and use them across the course or across all of your courses. So we'll, we'll just save that as well. Uh, and then if you want to add it, you just click Add, and now you have a rubric attached to your test. Close that. Um, and then the same thing to add um, questions. You find the plus sign, click the plus, and then you can add all of these different ty types of questions. 
um, that are on here. You can add question pools. You can have a question, uh, build a question bank. Um, you can do essay questions. You can do all sorts of um, multiple choice or true false. You can now do partial and negative credit, uh, which is something that was recently added um, to some question types. So you just, uh, let's just do um, true false. You just click the plus and you type in, um, is this true? And then you just select true. Uh, whatever the correct answer is, and you save it, and now you have a question built. Um, the you can do uh, you can create this is a little tricky. You can create tests using um, uh, TXT files uh, or CSV files and upload them in. Um, it, it's a little tricky, I think, but if that's something you're interested in, you can reach out for a consultation. Um, and then. The last thing here is if you want to make things available to students, uh, you can make it visible at the moment, or you can set the release conditions on, um, is it all members or to, to specific members of groups? And then you can set the date um, and time that you want it to release, or did they have to complete something before this is available? So let's say you gave reading comprehension quizzes, you may require them to actually open the reading first. And once they've opened that reading, then they can, then the quiz will appear. You can set that as you uh, kind of as you choose. So I'm just going to set it to visible so we can see it from student preview. Uh, once students submit work, then you can click on the submissions tab and you'll have information in here as well. Uh, and you can actually start your grading uh, workflow from here uh, as one way to go. Uh, the other thing that you might want to add uh, are assignments. Uh, and again, create, click assignments. And as I said before, it looks almost exactly the same. Um, as the test did. So it works exactly the same way. All the material is in here. Uh, if you want to change the grading, <coughs> you can you can click here uh, under grading and you can change it to percentage letter, complete and complete. You can set all those features as well. Uh, if you wanted it to be called something else, you just click in the category and then you choose the different category that you want it to be labeled as. Kind of same deal with the uh, release conditions up here. Uh, yeah, that, so that's pretty much exactly the same thing. So again, you just find the plus sign uh, and click it. <laughs> and that's how you add stuff. Um, one way to check your work, uh, and also if you want to kind of test some of the features, is to click the student preview, uh, which is up here in the upper right-hand side. If you click that and you click start preview, now you see uh, what students see. Uh, here you can see that I've not when a student logs in, they can see that they have not actually started this module. So if I click this, you can see out here I have um, a, a little, this is a blank circle, which shows that I haven't opened it, I haven't started it, and I haven't completed it. So I can click open the folder, and now it shows that I've completed it this way. This is one reason that you might want to use modules over just using folders. Uh, students can kind of keep better track uh, of what they've accessed and not accessed but it's kind of really dependent upon you and your preferences. Uh, and then the same, if you go into the test, uh, then they, they will start attempt, um, true, and then they just click submit. And then they get this uh, submission receipt that they can download if they would like. Uh, And that's really it. Um, from the student view on the gradebook, when they click on the gradebook, they'll see, because the test was automatically scored, uh, it posted the score out of 10 points um, automatically. And then if you click exit uh, and save, it will keep all of the work you've done in your student preview so you can look at the gradebook features. Uh, if you want to reset it, you just hit discard, and it will erase all of the student progress uh, from your preview user. I'm going to save it so we can go into the gradebook feature next. Uh, any questions on adding content, um, the content features? Like I said, if you want to move things, you just kind of hover over them until they turn light gray. And then you can uh, click and hold where these little dots are, and you can drag them anywhere you want. So let's say I wanted to take this out of the module. I can just click and hold and drop it down here. Or if I wanted to put it inside the folder, I can uh, drop it into the folder that way, like that. So it's a, pretty easy to use in that sense. Uh, once you have your material in here, it's pretty easy to move it around however you'd like. 
Uh, any, any questions on what I've covered so far? I know I'm going kind of fast. <clears throat> Okay, um, so if anything comes up again, throw it in the chat or, or just unmute and feel free to ask anything that you'd like. Um, the, I think the last thing or the most, probably the most important thing for some of you uh, is the grade book itself. Um, to grade items, um, you, there are multiple ways that you can get to them. Um, if you open an item and you go into submissions uh, up here in the top toolbar, you can now, uh, you can click on each student and then go through them um, this way. There's now also what's called flexible grading. So let's say I had a bunch of essay questions, uh, maybe, I don't know, six essay questions or something on a test, and I want to grade them by question. So I, I taught AP history last year, uh, and I would that's how I would grade. I would grade, you know, one uh, long answer question, and then I would grade every student's long answer question at once, and then I would go back and do the multiple choice or whatever. Um, you can you can set it so that way you just grade by question and it'll go through each student uh, by question or you can grade uh, as, a, as a whole uh, each student by clicking on students here uh, and then there's some you can sort them different ways uh, depending on when it was submitted or their names or student ids um, and then you can also sort by all graded uh, or needs grading or once you get uh, yeah so just needs grading i think that's the only one you can you can click so if someone submitted some things late and or you grade it early you can go back and just sort this way so that way you're not looking at the same stuff um, so that i access that by just going into the assignment and then clicking on submissions uh, the other way is to go actually into the gradebook which you see uh, up here at the top so you just click on the gradebook tab um, early on there was some uh, a little bit of trepidation when making the switch to ultra because of Gradebook views, but I think Blackboard has uh, kind of updated those now to so that any way that you would like to look at the gradebook is now available. So you have two choices. Uh, you have list view and you have grid view. And, the, and within list view, you can do graded items. So if I had 10 tests, they would all appear here in a row. Um, or you can uh, click by student. So if you want to go into each individual student and see their performance or where they're at or, or make adjustments, um, you can go that way. Um, then if you want to uh, click on the grid view, uh, you just click the little grid box that's uh, up here next to it. Um, this gives you a more traditional kind of layout of a, of, a, um, of a grade book. So if I had more students, they would be down here and then more assignments would come up here. You can add assignments that weren't in your, uh, on your content page by just kind of hovering over and clicking the plus. Uh, you can add an item, you can add an attendance column if you'd like. You can add calculations if you if you do that kind of thing, <clears throat> but um, this is what it looks like. So one thing that you'll need to do, uh, and probably the earlier the better, is set up your actual gradebook. Uh, and there are a couple of ways to do that. Because I already have this test in here, um, it's going to give me a little bit different of a view. But I can click here to set up my gradebook. If you haven't set it up, you'll see this uh, out here to the right. Uh, you can also go into settings which is uh, this cogwheel up here to the right. Anytime you see that, you can also uh, go in and do some of the setup. So the things that you will need to do uh, right at the beginning, um, you can always make changes if you need to, but the earlier you do this, the less headaches you're gonna have down the line. So if you go into the, the gradebook and then you click over on the settings tab on the right, the first thing to do is set your uh, grade schema. So this is probably dependent upon your department or whether it's an undergraduate or graduate level course. Um, typically you would just set this up to match your syllabus. Um, and this doesn't round. So if, it, if a student in this case has a 92.8, they are in um, an A minus. Uh, so you could set that if you wanted to say, you know, 92.5 and above. Um, you can add, you can click over here and you can change the, the label. Um, then you can change the uh, the band as well. And you can also um, click out on the three little dots. This is the other kind of feature that you'll see around and click edit, and then you can open it that way. If you have like a pass fail course or something, you can set up a different schema for pass fail uh, or com 
complete incomplete, however, however your course is set up. So that's the schema. That's, that's probably the first thing you want to set up uh, when you go into your course. I would recommend doing it before you add anything in, um, just to make sure you kind of have that set. Um, then you can go down. Here you can choose uh, when to get noticed about inactivity. So if you're a heavy Blackboard user and your whole course runs through Blackboard and students haven't logged in in 15 days, uh, that probably is concerning. Uh, or if they're failing the course or something, you can put that in and you'll get a notification that'll give you a chance to reach out to the student um, as well. You can choose to set automatic zeros for late work. If you've set this uh, and an assignment was due today at, at uh, 1015 and they haven't turned it in, a zero will automatically appear in the gradebook, which will obviously pull the grade down. The other thing that you'll need to set up is your overall grade. So the schema and then the overall grade, probably the most, uh, the two most important things that you'll need to get done uh, when you first get into your, your course. Um, so it, it really depends on how you run your course. So do you have a points or do you have weighted? Um, and then you just pick the one. You can change it if you'd like. Now, now that I've selected one, uh, if you just click, say I wanted to go to weighted, I just click weighted and then click save. And then I can set my um, uh, percentages uh, this way. So these are the these are the presets. If you don't use one, you can just set it to you know you can exclude it uh, with this little uh, circle and dash here, the no sign I guess, or you can set it at zero. Uh, but they all have to equal 100. So if you get a column that you want, uh, let's say I want my test to be 70%. If you put it at 70 and then lock it, it won't readjust. You can see all the rest of these readjusted um, going down. So then once you kind of set them, let's say I'll make the assignments 15%. Then you if you lock it. It won't mess it up if you go and change something else. Uh, and then here you can choose how is your grade displayed to students over on the right. Is it going to be points? Is it you want it to be a percentage? Do you want it to be letters? <coughs> complete and complete. It's up to you and, and your department's policy, I believe. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to save that. Um, and that's how your, your grades determined. Uh, some people drop scores. Uh, if you choose to do that, that's something you might be looking at right now in your courses. You can do that here under editing the calculation rules. If you click the little plus sign here, um, you can enable, and then you can uh, choose what to include or what to drop. You can drop the highest or lowest. You can drop the 10 lowest. Completely up to you. Those features are all here. And uh, if you have advanced math skills that uh, are significantly better than mine, you can use this advanced feature uh, and kind of create your own calculations. There are people in the office that can help you with that as well, if uh, if that's you. Um, but it's much less common than the kind of two traditional points or, or weighted categories. Uh, so I'm going to leave it at weighted, and I'm going to click Save. And then if I click this little arrow here, it'll dump me back into my grades category. And so I have it set up as a letter grade. If it was a percentage, it would be 100. And if it was total points, it would say 10, um, because that's what, what was out of. So let me get out of here. Um, so grade schema, automatic zeros, grade settings, um, and then categories. So uh, if you want to add categories, you just click that add new categories and you can add as many as you'd like. You cannot delete the old ones. You can exclude them from your grade book or just never use them. But the presets as of right now are stuck. You can't, uh, you can't get rid of them. So if you don't do homework and you don't even want a homework thing available, it, you're stuck with it for now. I'm sorry. Uh, there's nothing you can do uh, to change it. But if I wanted to add one, I'm going to add my emotions, hit enter. Mm -hmm. There we go. Hmm. Okay, well, seems to be a bug right now. But typically, you'll just click this, type it in, hit enter, and it will appear here. I'm not sure why it's not. Ah, there they are. So <laughs> if you do it once and it doesn't work, uh, you can close out. And then if you don't like one, you can click the three little dots out here, uh, and then you can either edit uh, or delete. And so if I delete all these, then I only have one. And that's how you set those up.
And like I said, you can do as many as you want. And then if you want to have course rubrics that you add, you add those here as well. <clears throat> and then um, that's it. That's the main features of the grade book. So uh, to review that piece, you have over here on the left, uh, once you're in the grade book, you can do the list view of gradable items or students, or you can do the grid view. Um, if you click the overall grade here, you can you can also go into the settings uh, for your overall grade book as well. So most things have multiple ways to get in. You can also get in from the settings wheel over here on the upper right um, and access the settings that way. And this is where you do the grade schemas. This is where you set how you're going to grade in your, grade in your course. And this is where you also set your categories. Uh, once the, And again, once those categories are in here, then you can go into your assignments or your tests and you can select those categories if that's the way you run your course. So that's, that's building. Uh, that's how you do um, storage. That's how you set assessments. That's how you do the gradebook. The, the last main thing um, that I think most of you uh, will be concerned with uh, is copying content over. Um, so as I said, if you try to copy an entire class, it can get muddled pretty quickly. Uh, we at the at CIDL recommend doing uh, kind of granular copies, uh, kind of chunks at a time, looking at how it works uh, making adjustments as needed, and then adding more. It's a, it's a good time to think about, um, and it's always a good time to think about, like, is the stuff that you have in your LMS being used? Uh, is it useful, or has it gotten kind of muddled? I know that I've gone through uh, in my own courses and added a whole bunch of things that I ended up never using. Um, this is, was always a problem with nesting, and then students couldn't find the work um, or couldn't find the, the assignments. So uh, it's always a good time to do a little cleaning. Um, if you feel like you need to, uh, but essentially how you add uh, copy content. If you copied in, in um, original in the past, uh, original does a push. So uh, if you want to take something from Blackboard original outward, you had to like make a package and send it out uh, to Blackboard um, Ultra is pulls things in. So um, all you do is click the plus sign and then click copy content. Um, and then all of your courses and shells will appear uh, in this box. And if you're in an organization, you just click over there to, to switch to organizations. Um, and then you can uh, pull material. CIDL has a template uh, if you would like to use it. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and pull uh, the entire template in to show you what would happen if you pulled in an entire class. You just click the box out here on the left. Um, and then down here at the bottom right, you click Start Copy. And then you'll get this spinning wheel. And this is going to depend on how big your course is. If you have a lot of large videos, uh, video files, big audio files and stuff, it might take a couple of minutes. Um, but if this thing is spinning, uh, I don't know, more than a minute or two, if you just refresh, oftentimes it's ready faster than, um, than it seems. So even though it's still showing that it's spinning, um, it's copied all of this material in. Um, so the, the, this was the one that we created here. But this, um, everything below that first module is the CIDL template. And um, we don't automatically put that on people's pages. But if you would like it, um, I'll have a link at the end that you can request the template. And you can kind of use that as structure if you'd like. Um, it has a module. Uh, and it has like a, if you want to do like a tour, um, uh, uh, kind of like an intro to your, your syllabus or background on the teacher, contact information and such a course information folder um, that has like a uh, sample syllabus, instructor stuff, um, and then a whole bunch of statements, like university statements on copyright and integrity and uh, etiquette, uh, accessibility statement, privacy information statement. Uh, you can use these. You can delete them. Uh, you can make them invisible. Completely up, You can completely change what you like. It's completely up to you. Um, and then there's a module. And then if you want to um, just uh, so you can add, you know, again, you know, by clicking the plus sign into the module. There's some. Uh, this folder here is for you, uh, instructional su instructor support folder with some tips uh, and some ideas. Um, or then you just use this module and then add your content. And then if you want to um, copy uh, that module, let's say you have a, a layout that you like, you can copy that as well. Um, same type of uh, of process. So. Here's the, uh, the kind of module layout. So you have um, you know, maybe an introduction and your objectives, um, a reading folder, and your activities and assignment folder. And then you can just 
replicate if you like that layout, you can replicate that uh, as many times as you like. So if you just click the plus and I click copy content, and let's say I want to just uh, just copy that part, I'm going to go into uh, so here's that course that that's from, and I'm going to click this little arrow out to the right. Now when I click that, I can go into content. And then I can just select module and I can start copy. And I'll get this kind of spinny wheel thing again. We'll give it a second to see if it goes on its own. And it's long enough, I'm going to refresh. Mm. And then now I have another uh, module here. And then if I want to edit that module, I just click on the three dots, and I click edit. And now I can rename it unit, unit three, whatever I want to call it. I can make it visible. I can set the release conditions here. <clears throat> and I can do all the other things that we looked at earlier. So that's the that's the uh, the copying feature. So you can do as much or as little as your course as you would like by just clicking a plus sign. Oh, and then if I don't like it here, again, I just hover, hold, click and hold, and then I can drag and drop that uh, anywhere that I'd like. And if I don't want something, let's say I don't want uh, this Q&A that came in that, I can just click out here on the three dots, and I can click delete. And then it gives me a confirmation screen, and then I delete. Um, let see if there's any others. If you use... Um, any uh, LTIs or building blocks, you'll find those down here in the content market. This is where you would add like Kaltura videos, for example. Um, if you if you work with like a textbook provider, <clears throat> they may be in here as well. Um, some of the other features, like so there's like McGraw-Hill. You can add a team scheduler if you'd like, um, OneNote, Pearson's. So depending on what you use, uh, your voice thread, you might find that in here as well. Uh, and that is under the plus sign, and then content market. You can pull files directly. Like I said, if you have PDFs of your syllabus and you want to just drop them in, you can click upload, or you can drag and drop it from the folder and dump it straight in. Um, then copy content. And again, you can click in. If you want to copy the whole course, you click out there on the left. If you want to go into the course and pick specific things, you just follow the arrows to, to get to where you want. And then you select the pieces that you want and click start copy. So that's that's everything. That's all there is to it. Um, with time, it'll get easier uh, once you start figuring out where things are. Some features are going to be a little bit more difficult to find than others, especially because you have to hover sometimes to find them. I don't, sorry, I don't know why that that's the case, but it is. As of right now, you cannot change. I know in in, in original so one complaint that people have is they want to change uh, what's up here. Let's say they don't want there to be a um, uh, a messages tab, for example. You don't want to use messages. You can't, right now you can't, all of these are set. You can't, um, we don't have the ability to move them around the order of them or delete them um, or change the name of them. Uh, and that's kind of the same out here on the left. Some of these things you can uh, you can hide if you're not using them, I believe, like disable the course room for collaborate. But most of these are out here, uh, stay out here as well. Um, one other thing I think is really useful, especially at the beginning of the semester, is uh, accommodations. So um, I know we're getting into final exams. If you haven't set an accommodation and maybe a student had 50% uh, uh, extra time um, and they started the test and then it shuts them down in an hour and they were supposed to have an hour and a half, it can get tricky. So setting accommodations early <coughs> can help save you some headaches um, on the back end. So how would you do that? You click on out here on the left, the roster. Uh, and then you click the three dots next to the student. And then you click accommodations. And then you can put a due date accommodation, which just means they won't be marked late and they won't receive automatic zeros if you have that set up. Uh, or you can set a time limit accommodation, and that can be based on you know 150% or 200% or unlimited time, however you choose. Uh, and this will carry over into group assignments as well. So if you put them in groups, uh, and they don't, then they have a due date accommodation. I believe the entire group will get the same due date accommodation. So there's six kids in that group or six students in that group. Um, that will carry over. Let me bring this back up. So we've gone through nesting, tracking, 
Um, oh, when you when you copy content over from your course, you might get notifications that say uh, there were exceptions to your um, to your copy, and it'll, it'll tell you if they're low, medium, or high priority. You copy a course over, you could get 20 of them when you copy a course over. And sometimes you won't even notice them. They're like minor little settings that that it just looks different in Ultra, and so it tells you these things. Uh, and sometimes things won't come, and so you have to find them and try to move them later. Sometimes that's an issue with videos. Um, you may have to go into your Kaltura and kind of re-upload them that way if it doesn't come over on the on a copy. Um, again, the site is going to recommend uh, very much that you would do more granular copy and kind of uh, uh, rearranging and, and rebuilding as needed, cleaning up things as needed. Uh, because what happens is, um, like I said, if you have a lot of folders, it can get smashed down. Assessments might move in and it might attach them to a due date uh, based off of the time that it occurred in the course over so the third week of the course. And let's say that it's marked as invisible to students and you don't use that assessment this semester. It may still put a column in the gradebook for that and then students may get automatic zeros and it may put it in a weird spot in the grade book. So uh, doing smaller chunks at a time, looking at it, getting it set up the way you want and moving pieces over, in most cases will save you the headache. If you wanna just copy it all into a shell and look at it, um, you can do that as well. There's also the, the, let's see if it's still on here. Yeah, here, if you're in your original course view and you want to um, click this pencil uh, that'll appear at the top, it, you can, do a preview and you can see uh, what your course will look like. The problem is if you accept it, so you, you put it in there and you're looking at it and it's like, do you want to keep this or, or revert to original? If you make that move, your stuff goes and it, you can't put it back to the way that it was, at least not easily, in original. So we recommend that you would, do, if you want to do a full copy, copy it into a shell, look at what it looks like, uh, and then go from there. If you just use Blackboard for your syllabus and document storage and, a whole, not, and it's not very complicated, that might really work for you. But if you are running your entire course out of Blackboard, um, a granular copy, kind of bit by bit or chunk by chunk, um, is probably going to be your best option as far as like saving you a headache down the road. Um, going through all this, just making sure I haven't missed anything. Um, and then if you want the template, you can go to sidle.niu.edu slash ask uh, and submit a request for it. Um, we have a workshops. Like I said, we offer 20-ish workshops every month, um, <clears throat> sometimes more. We're going to have more dates coming up um, to support with the ultra transition on um, the meetings week, the week before students come back. So if you still need more support, feel free to look there. You can reach out to me directly or to anyone else at Seidel. Um, or you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Um, those are typically an hour long. Uh, it can be longer if needed um, and over Zoom uh, or over Teams, I mean. Um, but you can also come to the office as well if you want to do it in, uh, a meeting in person. We have uh, typically at least two people every single day or in the office waiting on people uh, if they come in and helping uh, with anything that you need. Um, and then a load of information available on our website, tutorials, guides, um, and so on. And we're constantly adding and updating those um, as well as new features come available or as other things kind of go offline. Um, those are all there. Any questions? Uh, oh, you can also email me directly, kevin.harris at niu.edu, and I'm happy to set up times to help uh, with anything that I can. Um, as I said, I know that that this transition is, is can be quite challenging. Um, especially if you, you, know, you may have been using Blackboard version 9, which is the original view for, for the last decade or so. And so uh, kind of building these new workflows may take some time. And so if you need support, you need help, we're here. That's what we do. Please reach out to us. Uh, any questions while well, I'm still on here? Sorry, I know I've gone extremely fast. I wanted to just give you a, a view of what's there and a, a couple of workflows on how to get to them. But. Hmm. Okay, well, if you don't have any questions, uh, 
you're welcome to go. Um, this will be recorded. I'll send the recording out to you as well. Um, and I'm, I think they'll send you a survey. And uh, as I said, I'll, I'll also put the link for, for the site resources uh, in that email, um, the kind of follow up email. But thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for being patient with me. Hopefully this helps. Again, any concerns, um, doesn't really matter how big or how small, we're really happy to help uh, any way that we can. Just let us know. Thank you very much. Mm.